together here today. Let us worship the Lord in His presence as we pray. He'll be here to receive you and His presence you'll enjoy. Be at peace with the Lord today. I am at peace with my Maker since He brought me here today. I'm at peace with the Lord who has washed my sins away. I'm at peace with my Savior for He filled my heart with joy. I'm at peace with the Lord today. Give the Lord a clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor because you are worthy of praise. You are worthy of honor. You are worthy of glory. We thank you so much for all of your goodness unto us, oh God. We lift you up and we bless your holy name. And we thank you, Lord, for you are a good God, an awesome God, and you love us so much that you sent your son, Yeshua, to, to redeem us from all of our fallen state. And we give you all the praise and thanksgiving today. And we thank you in your precious name. Amen and amen and amen in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to ask uh, Minister Deb to come and to uh, share with you uh, the announcements and about a special event next week. And uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of a punch to it that uh, the Holy Spirit really spoke to me this year to get behind this event and uh, to uh, just really support what was going on. This is an organization that uh, was birthed out of the organization that uh, I'm board of directors on and uh, the Israel Christian Nexus helped give uh, the Kufa, John Hagee, their very their start. We gave them their seed money to begin. And they've been doing an excellent work. And a lot of the gentlemen that were on the board of directors for uh, come into the call, our group that my dad and I started here uh, in Sacramento. God started, we were just obedient, amen? But uh, uh, the, a lot of the same people are involved with now Kufi because they have the resources and the money to do what we weren't able to do or what we had, we exhausted our resources, you know, doing this. And so they're doing an excellent job. And the Lord had really told, had told me to, to let the organizers, our dear friends, Ted and Dee Berdine, know that I was going to get behind and support them as much as I could. And I was going to bring people from our community, other pastors that have not been exposed to supporting Israel. And uh, I mean, you know, a lot of the pastors in our community actually have accepted um, Islam and Muslims as part of Christianity. It's just a very strange paradox because they've been targeted and they believe a lie that Allah and Jehovah are the same God or Allah and Yahweh are the same God and that we're just different expressions of worship, almost like another denomination. And so uh, we need to, it's really important to get the truth out there and to uh, invite, invite uh, the pastors from our area uh, to attend things like this. And uh, God had, I have a testimony, God had told me to step out of faith and offer to take a, a table of pastors from Del Paso Heights to this event. And uh, not that there's a free event, but there is a banquet be preceding the event. That's why I asked Sister Marcy, she would head up the carpool. There's a banquet preceding the event that, that there's a, you know, a significant cost to having the table at the banquet. And so I had committed to bringing pastors and I filled, more than filled the table. I think I have 11 on my guest list of, of senior pastors and, and or their wives uh, from Del Paso Heights. And I thought, praise the Lord, I don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> I guess uh, uh, Pastor Fonda, she, she receives uh, some income. And I thought, well, we'll have that. We'll use mom's money to pay for it if we have to. <laughs> and uh, you know, you just, it's all God's, right? Yeah. And we do that uh, all the time. And uh, and I said, God told I know I heard the voice of God. I'm going to be obedient. And uh, they, when they came to drop these cards off yesterday to me, Ted and Dee, they came and they were just bubbling with enthusiasm. And they said that uh, a Jewish lady that has visited our congregation not too long ago, uh, when she heard 
that we had invited the pastors to this event, that she said, I want to bust Pastor Hinkle. And she opened, she said, here's my credit card number. Pay for all of his guests and everything else. So isn't God good? Amen. All the time he's good. And so, so I'm going to go in advance so I can't organize the carpool. So I asked Marcy. I put her on the spot this morning, and she answered the call and said she would do it. I said, you can, you can, uh, you can answer me later, but I need somebody. She said, I'll do it. I'll do it, Pastor. So with that, let's welcome uh, Deb as she comes. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Okay, so did everybody get your bulletin this morning? Yeah. Yes. No. Um, James, or Scott, I'm sorry. Will you bring up um, bulletins front row? Okay. There's a couple of people here that did not get bulletins. Thank you. I didn't get one of them. Okay, he's going to bring it to you. Leo wants one. <laughs> Do you want one? Oh, you got one. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. On the front are weekly activities. And we have Sunday school at 9. Service starts at 1030. Tuesday's the bread giveaway from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tuesday night prayer at 6. This week, our topical class at 7 has been uh, canceled just for this one week. Okay? So no Tuesday night Bible study this week. Um, Wednesday, we have our Bible study, which we are studying Dr. Nori Jack's book, By Divine Appointment, and it's on feasts. We're learning a lot about the feasts and the cycle of God's feasts and what he wants us to do with them which is really exciting. Things that most of us have never heard before. It's all new to us. So we're enjoying that. And then next Sunday, what Pastor was talking about, this is the flyer for that. And um, it's next Sunday night at 6 o'clock. We're going to meet here, correct, Marcy? Yes. At what time? Uh, 4.30 is what it is. Okay, we're going to meet here at 4.30. All right, so anybody wants to come? If you can let Marcy know so she yes. can put you on the list, that would be wonderful. And that'll help. It, it'll be a great time. Um, I believe Capital Christian's a pretty big church, so there'll be plenty of room for everybody to fit, right? Yeah. Amen. Okay. And um, I just want to welcome back Michelle. We missed her. Amen. Just waiting for her mom to come back. Amen. Amen. And, and some people we haven't seen in a while, Paul and Cassie. And yeah. Scott, and I'm sorry, Tony. I forgot. Oh, thank you, Tony. I'm oh, sorry, Tony. It's good to see you guys back again. Amen. Everybody Amen. have a good week. Amen. Well, Pastor Fonda was uh, commenting this morning that uh, Paul and Cassie being here is a direct answer to prayer because it's the month of the Lul. And during this month, the shofar has sounded all over Israel. And uh, Paul has brought his shofars. And so before worship and during worship, I like to have the sounding of the shofars. So Brother Paul, can you come and, and open us up? We're going to use uh, tracks today. And who and Deb, you have your shofar as well. Bring your shofar. And we're going to we're going to play. We're going to blow the shofars. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyway, we both believe that they will hear the trumpet sound. And uh, 
He said it was like in Israel, they blow the trumpets over the city, over their children, over their synagogues, over everywhere. Uh, and there is a sound of the, the voice of the shofar that's calling to us to be awakened. And it's a spiritual awakening for the preparation of the things to come in the new year. Because a law will be in the last month in the Jewish calendar. That it's a preparation for all of the new year to come and all of the things God wants to do in your life. So when you hear the voice of the shofar, just be prepared to hear from God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's go to the Lord and worship today. Amen. By the way, my son was heading down from Kula. There was an accident on um, 49, and so they turned him around. So just pray uh, for a safe travel for whoever who's in that accident that, that God would touch him, amen? Yes. And uh, Johnny and Josiah text my other children and ask why they're not in church yet. Amen. Yes. amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise for a little bit more on the tracks. We don't have anything coming out of the speaker. Thank you, Lord. Ask of you one thing that we desire, that as we worship you, Lord, come and change our lives. You're to rise, arise, arise.
in his coming of the Messiah in the clouds of glory, like he said he'd come and receive his glorious church unto himself. Amen? Hallelujah. 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 Holy Spirit, you're welcome here today. Praise Adonai, hallelujah. There is none like him. Who is like him, the lion and the lamb, seated on the throne. Mountains bow down and every ocean roars to the Lord of hosts. Don't forget him. Call him back. And 
pray for him for his complete recovery in Jesus' name.
Bless the Lord. Oh, my son. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And forget not his benefits. Hold oh, I Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his hope. Bless the Lord, 
all his work in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. Give the word of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, he's been so good to me. You don't know that kind of what he's done for me. You don't know what he's done for me. What he done for me. Come on, Pastor Johnny. You don't know like I know what he done for me. What he done, what he done, what he done for me. Oh, you don't know like I know what he done for me.
and just to know that you are in control. He doesn't want you to give to pay the bills. He wants you to give to help yourself because God is faithful. He is so faithful to us. He loves you so much. In Jesus' name, I thank you for what you're about to do in our offering this morning. In Jesus' mighty, holy name, amen. amen. If you'll, if some of you are new, we have an offering buckets up, up front if you want to give. And if you want to just raise your hand, if you can't walk up to give, that would be just fine. We also have an ATM. If you want to use your ATM card, just come up and see our pastor. He has a, a thing that you can swipe. Faithful, God is faithful to perform, perform in his word. See, faithful, 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 God is faithful. teaching people to give. I give and God always meets my needs. Always. He always meets my needs. Sometimes I don't trust someone. I run ahead of them and I, have to, I try to work it all out. 
but he always meets my needs. We do our part, yeah, he does his yeah. part. Amen? Yeah. He, we do our part, he does his part. Yes, and so if, if the Holy Spirit, I'm not saying that Pastor Hinkle, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you to give more, you any time, or if you want to wait till after service, come up, stick it in the bucket, or hand it to Barbara, because she uh, takes care of the offering yeah. things. Uh, go ahead and do that, uh, because God is... Uh, Thank you. Because God is uh, faithful, and uh, He is uh, He is faithful to perform His Amen. Yes, He does. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! Thank you. Hallelujah! 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We have to be led in the Spirit of God, amen? We've got to be led in the Spirit of God. And, uh, yeah. God, the Holy Spirit is all over me right now. If you are standing where I am standing, you would feel the hairs of my head are standing up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. See, He, he loves it when people respond to His Spirit. And those are people who respond to the Spirit. Obedience, it says, is better than sacrifice. We don't always understand, you know, what God is telling us or why He's telling us, but be obedient. Amen. Be obedient to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what, Barbara, I do. Oh, she's not here. I want her to sing a song. So, um, I wonder if seeing a song, I think that Ray sang it with him. Ray, did you sing Roll Back the Curtains? Who sang that with her? Roll back the curtains of memory now and then. Don't we have a track for Barbara? Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. But remember, I'm human and human. We sometimes forget, so remind me, remind me, dear Lord. Roll, let's get together. Roll back the curtains of memory now and then. Show me where you brought me from. And where I could have been, remember, Lord, I'm human, and humans, we sometimes forget, so remind me, remind me, dear Lord, oh yes, remind me. Remind me, dear
Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Deuteronomy 11, 26 to Deuteronomy 16, 17. The prophets, Isaiah 54, 11 to Isaiah 55, 5. Gospel, John 16, 1 to John 17, 26. Now these are the scriptures we're supposed to be studying through the week. Uh, and now we'll have an overview. Giving to the poor, the thought for the week. You shall not hesitate to give nor murmur when you do give, because you shall know who is a good repair of the hire. You shall not turn away from him that is in want, but you shall share all things with your brother, and shall not say that they are your own. For if you are partakers in that which is immortal, how much more in things which are mortal, did I cheat for seven through eight. You shall generously give to him, and your heart shall not be grieved when you give to him. Because for this thing, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all your undertakings. Deuteronomy 15.10 The Torah commands us to give generously to the poor. You shall freely open your hand to your brother, to, to your needy and poor in your land. Deuteronomy 15.11. The master talked frequently about giving to the poor and encouraged his followers to do so lavishly. Believers should be distinguished as the most generous people on earth. When Paul received permission from the apostles to take the gospel to the Gentiles, the apostles gave him only the stipu one stipulation. They asked him to teach the Gentiles to remember the poor. Genesis 2 and 10. When you give to the poor, when you give to the poor, we should do so with glad with a glad heart. So praise God. The Torah says your heart shall not be grieved when you give to the poor man. Deuteronomy 15.10. That is why Paul says, each one must do just as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, 2 Corinthians 9.7. The rabbis taught the poor man does more to the giver than the giver does for the poor man. Why? Because as Deuteronomy 15.10 says, if you give generously to the poor, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all your undertakings. Deuteronomy 15.10 The person who gives to the poor man seems to be doing the poor man a favor, but he is actually receiving the gift of God's blessing from, from the poor man. A person who refuses to give to the poor forgets that he himself depends on the generosity of God. If we refuse to be generous when we see others in need, why should God help us when we are in need? Yeshua refers to giving to the poor as storing up treasure in heaven. Invest in your eternity. What are you depositing into the bank of heaven? Amen. Praise God.
Are you reading your Torah portion? So it was just a summary. That wasn't like the end of it. That was just kind of fun to give you some food to thought that we can get from First Fruits of Zion. But you're supposed to read this Torah portion throughout the week. Deuteronomy 11, 26 through Deuteronomy 16, 17. Isaiah 54, 11, 55 through, I don't know what's a good uh, in this one. Isaiah 55, 5. 54 11 through 55 5. And then uh, Isaiah 66 1 through 66. And the Gospel of John 16 1 through 17 26. 16 1 through 17 26. <laughs> What I'm trying to instill in you, and, and uh, somebody reminded me, some people just aren't going to do it. But if you want to grow every day, you'll read God's Word every day. If you want to grow every day in relationship with God, you'll speak to Him. He speaks to you through His Word, you know? And just coming to truth, this is the problem with uh, Western Christianity is we have become, we have turned worship into an event when worship is supposed to be a lifestyle. Did you hear me? Mm -hmm. We have turned worship into an event where worship is supposed to be a lifestyle. That's why God gave his children the feast that you're going to learn more and more and more and more, more, more about. Come on, we'll see you learn more about. All right. Come to Sunday school. We're going to change up the the Sunday school um, is going to be on the Torah portions in Sunday school. But God had a plan and he gave the feast to his children because it kept everything constantly before our face and our homes and our lifestyles. Everything had to be worked around worshiping God instead of fitting God into Sunday morning between 11 and 3, or some people between 10 and 1, or 10 and 10.30, or whatever, they're 12 and 1. I've been told several times the reason that my church isn't growing uh, the way that we would like to see it grow is because our services are too long. Well, I'm not going to not worship God because somebody else doesn't want to. Amen. We're going to be led of the Holy Spirit. We're going to worship God, and we're going to do what He tells us to do. Um, <clears throat> praise God. Oh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you now and I thank you for your word. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for all of your goodness and us. In the name of Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. I started to call today Blossom, but I thought, well, that's only halfway there. So I said, let's bloom, right? Blossom, let's bloom. <laughs> or I could have said bear fruit. <laughs> but uh, that, that's the idea. That's a, that's a process. Let's blossom, bloom, and bear fruit. Amen? Let's blossom, bloom, and bear fruit. Let's look at the scripture today. I'm not going to be before you long, I promise. Mark 11, 19, 26. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple, and when he had looked around about upon all things, and now the even time has come, and he went down into Bethany with the twelve, and on the morrow when they were gone from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he met, find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. So the time of figs is not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. He created the tree to bear fruit. Evidently, it was supposed to bear fruit when he, in his timing, not in its timing. You know, did you get that? God created that particular tree to bear fruit. And it was supposed to bear fruit in Yeshua's timing. 
not in its own timing. I'm going to say that one more time in case you missed it. All right? God created the fig tree, that particular fig tree, different from all the other fig trees. And he expected it to bear fruit according to his need for the fruit the day he was coming back from Bethany. But the tree was stubborn. What does the word say about stubbornness? It's next to witchcraft. The tree was stubborn and did not bear fruit. The way God created it to bear fruit. On that day when he wanted the fruit because he was hungry and he was God. So he said, okay. You're not going to feed me. You'll never bear fruit again. All right. All right, all right. And they came to Jerusalem, and Jesus went to the temple and began to cast out that so them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Stop here for a minute. I want, to, I want to explain something here. A lot of people have misunderstood this uh, scripture. And like when uh, people have uh, ministry things, you know, books or tapes or whatever, and they're selling them in the church. Oh, Jesus. Too. You know, you need to understand why he did that. It wasn't the mere fact that they had, they were selling things in the church that he offended him. What offended him was they were ripping people off. They were selling them sacrificial animals because the people, would, instead of bringing their animal, they would, it was a long journey. They were in the custom right, of right. they were in the custom of selling their their animal at home and making the long journey to the temple and buying one that was supposed to be without blemish. And the the priests were on the tape like so many of the pastors are today. And so they would when the people would bring the animal to be sacrificed that the people paid for, he would say, "Oh, there's a blemish." You got to go get me one without a blemish. So they would take it back to the person that sold it to them. And that person would say, oh, I didn't sell you that one with a blemish. And they would sell them another. They were cheating them. Yes, amen. It was unlawful to bring any graven image into the temple of God. So they could not bring money that they used in the day because it had a picture of the face of Caesar on the coin. And because they would not bring a graven image into God's temple, they had to exchange their money for temple money that was made for the giving of the temple. And so they used unjust weights. People would bring, would go to buy, it would be like coming in and saying, how much is an ounce of gold? And they say it's $342. But um, because we have an extra temple tax, it's going to be $400 today. And then you give them your $400. And then they don't even give you an ounce when they give you three quarters of an ounce. Okay? They were cheating the people. They were making merchandise of worship. That is why Jesus overturned their tables. Not because they had to recuperate the cost from materials that the body could benefit learning from. I have no problem having somebody sell a book that they had to pay to have published right. to, to support a ministry. That is not what God was talking about. But people are ignorant. And they're being, they, they don't look at things in context, okay? So you have to realize why that was, why he, Yeshua was so angry. Lord. And he taught saying to them, it is not written that my house should be called a na- of all nations the house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. Because instead of going into the house to worship God, most of the people are going there to rip off the people that were going to worship God. And the people would get so upset with being ripped off or not being able to have enough money to make their sacrifices that worship wasn't even happening. Prayer wasn't happening because they were too busy getting in the ritual of trying to 
perform everything they were supposed to do, that they weren't ever getting to the place where they could worship God in spirit and in truth. And the scribe to the chief priests heard it, and they saw how they might destroy him, for they feared him. Yeah, he's going to take away all their greedy income. Because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, he went out of the city, and in the morning, as he passed by, he saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remember, said unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed, and it withered away. And Jesus answered and saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he has said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he asketh. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive, if you have hot against any, ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Now that seems to be a little bit off topic today, because I'm talking about bearing fruit and the fruit of the Spirit, but it's really not our topic. Because we cannot bear fruit unless we are in right standing with God. We cannot be in right standing with God if we are walking around with unforgiveness in our heart. All right, okay? Amen. We cannot, he says, don't even give an offering, don't even bring your worship to him unless you go and make peace with those that you have ought with. You can only do what you can do. Some people don't. I have one person in my life who... Though it's very hard, I told the Lord I'm willing to make peace with, and I sent a message, and uh, and uh, you know what? That person said, I never want to see you again. I would rather kill you. So, I believe I'm released. You know, I can't do anything about that. You know? That's between him and God. He's going to stand before God one day, and he's going to have unforgiveness in his heart towards me. And he's going to have to answer to God about that. I done my part. I was willing. I wouldn't need it, Brother Poole. But I don't want to be there either if I have unforgiveness towards anybody. No, amen. Amen. And and this even goes back to the thing I was talking about earlier: the tension between the races that is alive and well in our country today. You can't walk up to somebody, and, you know, like, I, I can't walk up to you, Brother Cleo, and say, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry that I shoved you. But you know what? You should not have said those ugly words that got up in my face. What? That's not an apology. <laughs> and that's what is happening in our nation today. People are wanting to justify their, the ugliness yeah. by making the accusation, and then so the cycle continues. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we can't bear fruit if we're part of this cycle. Because that ugliness will stay inside of us. And it'll bear fruit. It'll bear the wrong kind of fruit. And we'll pass it down to generations. Amen. Let's go on. Matthew 25, 14 through 30. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And then to one, and, and let's, let's, let's update this in today's vernacular. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country and he called his employees and he delivered unto them the money from his bank account. <laughs> right? Right? And, and one he gave $500. And to another two, and to another one, everyone according to his several ability, he gave some money. And the script says, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. But it would be like saying, so this, this, this employer, he gave one of his employees 500 bucks, he gave another one 200 bucks, and he gave another one $100. He's, and he went off on his business trip. Straightway he took his journey. Mm -hmm. Then he that had received the five talents 
went and traded with the same and made them another five talents. So he like, you know, so he took his five hundred bucks, he put it into, and he, he he invested it into into some some commodities and. Uh, and they, uh, they came back and they yielded a 100% yield, and therefore he had a thousand bucks instead of 500. Yeah. All right. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained another two. So the one that had two, he said, you know what? I don't, I don't really kind of have enough for commodities, but I'll tell you what, I think I'll go and I'll buy some flour and uh, some butter and and some sugar, and I'm going to make some cakes up. And, and so he took his $200 and he made up some cakes and he sold them all and he made $400 back, so he had $400. But he that received one talent went and digged in the earth and he hid the money. I mean, like I say, so the, the dude that he gave $100 to, he took it and stuck it under his mattress. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. So let's put it. So he came back from his business trip and he said, Hey, come tell me what you did with my money I gave you to invest. And so the one that received five talents came and brought another five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. So he said, Hey, boss. You went on your business trip, you gave me 500 bucks, and I got a thousand for you. Here you go. Are you proud of me? <laughs> His Lord said unto him, Well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter to the joy of the Lord. So basically, he said, Good job. You know what? Instead of being a steward, I'm going to make you a manager of other stewards. I'm going to give you a promotion, young man. You did a good job. Do you want a promotion in the, in the kingdom of God? He that received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered said to me two talents. Behold, I gained another two talents besides them. Is that all I have? His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many things. And turn to the joy of the Lord. So he said the same thing. The dude gave a couple hundred bucks to him, brought him a full you know, double. He said, I'm going to give you a promotion. But he that received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that you were a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strong. And I was afraid. And I went hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast it. It's yours. His Lord answered him and said to him, You wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest what I reap where I sow, it's not gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money in exchangers, then at my coming I would have received my own with usury. Take him therefore the talent from him and give it to him which has ten talents. For unto every one that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. And cast ye the improbable servant into the outer darkness, there shall be weeping and ashing of teeth. So he came back and, he said, and the boss said, Okay, what'd you do with the hundred bucks I gave you? And he said, I have your hundred bucks. Here you go. I didn't want to lose it, so I didn't take any risk. I stuck it under my I didn't hold it, I stuck it under my mattress. All right, all right. I knew you're a shrewd man and you wouldn't want me to take the risk losing your money. And he said, you wicked employee, how dumb are you? You know I always make money. I didn't give you that money. I didn't take it out of the bank where I was getting interest and give it to you so you could give it back to me with no interest. You should at least put it back in the bank. That means you're fired. All right, now. Right? You probably shouldn't have said dummy. That's name calling. We don't believe in that. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. God expects us to grow. Yes, God expects us to bear fruit. Yes, he didn't save your soul so you could just come sit in a church pew every week and say amen. All right. hmm. He saved you because he has a work for you to do in his kingdom and he wants you to bring an increase. We used to say if each one would reach one. Man, 
I've been here now for 14 years coming up in September. If every year each one of us would have brought one person into the kingdom of God and into this church, our church would be too full to handle all of us in 14 years. Let's do the math. If my phone didn't die. Because I'm having a feeling that the math is going to be too much for us to handle. So let's say that we started off, and we had more to start with, believe it or not, but I'm not saying this conservatively. If we started off with 50 people the first year, we added another 50 to it, the second year we would have had 100 people. We added another 100 to it, the third year we'd have 200. If we added another 200 to it, the fourth year we would have had 400. If we added another 400 to it, the fifth year we would have had 800. If we added 800 to it, the sixth year we would have 1,600. If we were to add 1,600 to it, the seventh year we would have 3,200. If we were to add 3,200 to it, the eighth year we would have 6,400. If we were to add 6,400 to it, the ninth year we would have 12,800. If we would have added 12,800 to it, the next year we would have 25,600. How many years am I here? 256. What's that, Brother Scott? What's that? No, I, I'm wondering, are you correct on my math? No, 256, next year, 512. How many years are we up to so far? Huh? 10 years? Okay, so 25,600 more? 51,200. If we were each one brought one more that year, it would have been 102,400. <laughs> okay. Over 100,000 we can stop because we had one more year. It would have been over 200,000. Well, 204,800. Okay. We have over 200,000 members if each year each member won one person to Christ and brought them to church. Where are they at, that's what I'm saying, Pastor. And that's not a rebuke. That's just looking at it. With those type of numbers, I mean, if we just won one person a decade, we would increase, the, we would double the church every decade. We'd at least have 100, 100 people going on 200. If in 10 years each one of us won one person to Christ and brought a man, and then we replaced the dying off, you know, you have some to die. See, God expects us to bear fruit. <laughs> yes, Brother Ray. Soul, the university, I mean, the, the Assemblies of God Church and Soul started in, in 2000, in, in, in 1952, 56. And today they have 78,000 people. Wow. Wow. They have them. rotated their services so everybody has to sign their service. 24 hour prayer services. Yes. Yes. Because people are hungry for God. See, we need to be hungry for God. We need to be fruitful. We need to have the joy of the Lord. We need to have the. Let's look at Galatians 5 13 26. For brethren, ye have not been called to liberty, only use not liberty. Oh, let me start over. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to another, so they cannot do the things that they would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. 
Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, evil, immolations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such, so the like. Of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. Now I'm not going to preach on that because you read for yourself. I'm going to read the scripture to you. But I don't believe I'm preaching on the problem. I believe I'm preaching on the solution. Amen? Amen. The solution is this. But the fruit, do you notice it's singular? You notice that? The fruit, it's singular, really, of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of being glory, provoking one another, and being one another. Amen? We're supposed to be bearing fruit. Back up, Brother Kevin, to the last scripture. Let's say the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. So if we are bearing fruit in our lives, if we are if we are walking in a right relationship with God, if we are a bearing fruit in our lives, the fruit of the Holy Spirit will be manifest in our life. And these will be the things that others see when they look at us. We can be successful because we have discipline. Amen? Which is which one of the discipline? Self-control, right? What is self-control? Temperance. Temperance. Self-control. Love. We love one another. If we truly love, it'll come back to us. Joy. Peace. What is long-suffering? Do you know what long-suffering is? I know we read these all the time. I want to know. Understand what is long-suffering? Patience. Patience with yourself, with God, with others. I told you once, I don't mean to tell you. I'm not going to tell you another time. Get it right and ship out or ship out. Okay? <laughs> I had some, some about, more than one person leave the church and tell me that I wasn't hard enough on people. Well, guess what? That's not my job. My job is to teach the truth. Yes. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit's job to bring the correction. Yes. And the Word of God will bring the correction yes. because it is, it is sharper than a two-edged sword. Now, when it starts affecting other members, i got to step in because I'm supposed to guard over their souls. <laughs> and I do step in. I don't do it in a public, humiliating way. But I send them packing right through those doors. And they won't conform to the word of God. And they're affecting the other members of the church in a negative way. Out that door. Because I have a responsibility to the flock he's given us. But other than that, I'm to teach the truth. Amen? Amen. I'm to be long-suffering. You know, I've had women and men involved in devious plots to take over the church, this little church. I can name five of them, there probably been more. I had one man that wanted to steal our building that I was extending love to and allowing to use our building, even planted a bug in my office so they could try to find out where our weaknesses were. Crazy, crazy stuff you would never believe. I had one man put my stuff, where I had my office upstairs, I had one man put my stuff in boxes and move into my office and say, my dad wanted him to be the pastor, and that was his office, and I could find another place for my, for his place, my stuff. I had to say, brother so-and-so, 
Yeah, I'm calling the police, and if you're not gone in 30 minutes and you don't leave my keys, you're going to jail. Amen. You see, Pastor knows how to be tough when I have to be tough. I might be fat and jolly, but I'm not always nice. <laughs> and I'm not going to stay fat very much longer either. I'm losing. I've lost 50, almost 60 pounds or more than, somewhere around 50, 60 pounds. I have on a scale this week. I lose another 55, 60 pounds and bulk up with the gym. So, you know why? Because I have work to do. I need to be healthy. I have work to do. I need to be healthy. I don't have grandkids I want to see. You know, they're going to hurt me. And I work for the kingdom of God to be ready to be fruitful and multiply in the kingdom. Amen. And y'all need to get on board too with growing the church. That's that I need to plan on talking about what the, the, the Holy Spirit did today. Because, you know what? I'm not going to stand before God and have him say, I gave you a church with 50 souls and you brought me home with 35. All right, now. I'm not, I'm not going to be that pastor. Amen. So y'all get busy. Because I can't do it by myself. It's a body ministry. Yes, it is. Start witnessing. Start evangelizing. Start reaching out in love and bringing other, other people in. You know? And let's grow the body of Christ. I know the Holy Spirit will add to the church as he sees fit. But let's make it a fit place for him to come by being fit. Let's be ready. Let's be full of the Spirit. Let's be having the, the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Amen? Amen? Let's walk in peace and love. Let's demonstrate love when it hurts. Amen. Let's look our wounds and just get up and surrender to God. Amen? Amen. That's what, you know, sometimes your hopes and dreams are not God's best for you. All right, now. Did you get that? Yeah. Sometimes your hopes and dreams are not God's hopes and dreams for you. Or his best, because he's got a plan. And we've got to surrender our plans to him. You know, this year, this birthday was a hard birthday for me. I'll tell you why. Because when I was a young man, I had a I had a business plan and I had a life plan. And before I went through a crisis, I had several million dollars in assets. And according to my life and business plan, I was going to have more than enough for all my children by the time I was 50 years old. Right. And I was going to stop work and I was going to just evangelize and enjoy my grandchildren the rest of my life. So, that was my plan. All right. And I should, and I would have had most hundreds, probably a hundred million dollars or more. Because at a young man, I had multiple millions. But you see, God had a different plan for me. He knew amen. something different yeah. than that. Yes, amen. Maybe I couldn't have handled that type of wealth. Maybe I would right. have fallen into deep sin. Maybe I would have gone off the deep end. Or who knows? All right now. Maybe he just, maybe none of that's true. Maybe I would have been just as solid and true as I am today or even more so. But he knew that somebody here needed me. Thank you, Make my heart grow. But whatever God's plan on it was, it's God's plan. We have to be yeah. in it, amen? amen. And I don't say that to sound like a big shot or anything, because I'm the reason I was wealthy at the time is because God blessed me. And I, and Brian Jacks challenged me to double tithe. And we started doing this, and God just kept increasing me. And just kept increasing me, kept increasing me. And the more I gave God, the more he gave back. That's why I tell you guys to give. You know? That's why I look at the at the sheets. I, I, I know who's giving and who isn't. Because I know where your soul is or if you're forgetful. Some people, last month we had members just forget to pay their tithes and always pay their tithes. So, look at your checkbooks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, first Sunday, one person paid their tithes. That I know of. Some may have gotten cash, you know. But uh, the week before that, two people did. And there's a lot more than three people in the church, you know. So, and I'm not complaining. Some of you may have today, you know. 
I'm not complaining about that. You know, if that's what you're hearing, you're not hearing the right message. I'm not worried about that. If that's what you're hearing, you're not hearing the right message. What I hope you're hearing about that is that I know about the principle of giving when you give it to the Lord. That he is faithful and he always takes care of you, you know? He always takes care of me. I, I might not have everything the way I want it in order, but you know what? God fixes it for me. And, and we can trust him. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Look around. See somebody that was that's not here today? Sylvia's not here today. Uh, look around. Who else isn't here today? Bob and Darlene are not here today. Becky's not here. And Marty and Chris, they're having some type of problems. Yeah. Bobby Joe and Edward aren't here. Who else? Oh, they had work, I think. Uh, my and my children are right over here. I know why two of them aren't. Martha. Who is it? Martha. Martha, yeah. Sister Plucky isn't here. Okay. Charlotte doesn't get to be here today. Charlotte. Levi isn't here. I haven't seen Levi for a while. You guys, call them. Let them know we miss them. You know, I can only meet so many people, you know. But uh, when we don't see somebody for a while, when they come back into the church, it shouldn't be the first time they talk to any of us. Yes, Sister Barbara. Our phone directory. Our phone directory, yes. Does everybody have a directory? Okay. Get in your phone directory and call the members. Fellowship with one another. I don't know how many calls Tony got. And don't answer me because I'll probably be embarrassed. But... <laughs> Uh, somebody should have called or texted him, you know, while he was out. Brother Scott, good to have you back. You know, you were, I learned this morning things I should have known before. In my defense, I was in Peru for a long time and I got sick. But but we but when our members um, are not there, we shouldn't. When we call them, it's not because we're saying, "Oh, shame on you." We should be calling them just to say, "Hey, we missed you. How are you?" Can we do anything to you? How can we minister to you? You're our brother, our sister. You're our family. We, you know. So, uh, reach out in love. Let's grow the church. God is opening some amazing doors. We're going to be going to a three-hour um, radio show that's uh, on the internet. So it's audio and visual. Um, and we're meeting with the producers here soon. The same radio show will probably be picked up in uh, the radio station in the Galilee that's being uh, pushed out to the Muslims all over surrounding Israel. And uh, there's 250 stations that have the option of picking our show up uh, when we go. Daystar has a slot for us. And so we have, uh, we don't have the resources to do it. I'm trusting God's going to provide them. Brother uh, Nick Val is going to help us. You'll begin, we're going to put real studio lights, probably a curtain, um, but we're going to put in more speakers so wherever you're at, you get the same sound without having to be super loud, you know. We're going to be putting over here in the back a uh, uh, switching room, you know, for video, you know, so you can run two cameras and do close-ups and things, you know. And you'll have a program, what do you call that? I can't think what you call that. Uh, like a, a production room, you know, so that uh, uh, we can put up the, the video of the person preaching or singing separate from the scriptures, you know, we can fade in and out and do different things, you know, scriptures. So we're going we're to do, we're gonna do this because God has given us an opportunity. I'm going to go back on the Apple iTunes store as a podcast, both audio and video. And so we're going we're gonna to bring the message up. I really believe we have a message that God has called us to, to share and uh, that uh, he's given us the opportunities. And so uh, just be in prayer about our church and and, and, and for one another. God's doing good things and devil's trying to stir up grief. You know? So 
let's uh, continue in prayer and uh, let's be diligent and diligent. Amen. Diligent and diligent in loving one another. Amen. And I want to welcome, I want to welcome our sister. Hello. It was so good to see you this morning. Bless the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. You're an awesome God who loves us so much. Father, Lord, let uh, the words that are spoken that are truth take root in the spirits and souls and minds and bodies of every member here. Anything that I said in air, Father, I ask that you just let fall to the ground. And we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Lord, be glorified in this body. Be glorified in each one of us. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. And we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people. The saints of God said, Amen, amen and amen. amen. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love. Shofar, amen. Tune your ear to the shofar, but it's going to announce the coming of the Son of God.